Welcome to the Have Courage Summit. This is a summit dedicated to helping you get out of your own way and to help unleash the potential that sits within you. Uh, this morning, I'm really grateful to welcome Dr. Bina Kandola onto the summit. Now, Bina is someone I've got to know quite well recently, the last 12 months, which is really exciting. So he is an expert on unconscious bias and is a senior partner of the psychological practice, Pern Kandola. So hello there, Bina. Hey, Gary. Great to be here. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, would you mind just maybe expanding for anyone that doesn't know you on that introduction I just gave um, about you, just so people get to know you in a little bit more detail? Yeah, well, I'm senior partner at Pern Candola, a practice of uh, business psychologists. And um, the area I've, I've, I've worked in, um, the practice does a lot of things. And uh, you know, from, from you know, helping people, organizations recruit, how they develop their staff, uh, all the way to, to helping people um, to exit organizations. The, the, um, the, my, my work is primarily concentrated on the aspects of equal opportunity, diversity, and over the last 15 years, the topic of bias in organizations. Wonderful. And has, has that always been something that you, was that always a passion of yours sort of through education as you sort of grew up? Or has it been more, more, more the, late, the latter years been for you? Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's, always been a, it's always been an interest. I think it became a passion, I think, uh, when, I, when I left education and went into employment. Uh, and you could just see what was going on within the workplaces, how unfairness was considered. Um, but, but it wasn't even recognised. Mm. You know, the, 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 the sorts of things, you know, the people who were on the receiving end of it obviously knew they were not being treated fairly, but the people who were running a corporation just considered this to be, um, they considered them, the, their behaviour to be fair and that uh, um, there's nothing, need, nothing needs to change. Uh, but you could actually see that was, there was a lot of inequality in organisations and that then it became a passion. Wonderful. And you know, today we wanted to talk about, of course, the summit's about courage. We also wanted to touch on resilience today um, mm -hmm. as well. So I just wanted to maybe start by asking, you know, what does resilience mean to you as Binner, just out of interest? Yeah, for me, it, it means having the, the, the resources, physical, mental, psychological resources, which enable you to um, recover from a setback. So it, you, you obviously, it, 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 uh, you know, where you have a setback, it has a, an impact on, on your physical kind of health um, and people are more prone to viruses and illnesses and that sort of stuff. But it also has an impact on terms of how we think about ourselves. Um, and, but having those resources to, to bounce back from the setback is important. And an important part of that is actually having the social resources as well. Uh, that a network of people can help you recover. Oh, that's, that's really powerful. And how, how does that show up in the work that you do um, you know, currently when you work with organisations or, or, or leaders? What sort of challenges are people dealing with that maybe, maybe our viewers would resonate with? Well, I mean, you, you, you look at the topics of discrimination. Uh, so we, we've, we, we did a survey in 2018. I've done another survey now in 2019 uh, looking at racism in the workplace. The last year's survey actually found of, of a survey of 1,500 people, 60% uh, of black people, 42% of Asian people, so they've experienced racism in the workplace. And there were no differences on this on age. So actually young people are experiencing it as much as older people. You'd have thought that older people, you think, well, they're older, they've had a longer working life, they, they're bound to have experienced it at some point. Um, but actually when you find that it, it, it's happening right from when people start work, it's, it's, a, it's a concern. The, and also the, the, our latest research has actually found that the impact of this is, is uh, on people's psychological well-being. Okay, that, that, that's interesting because I read, um, I was really gratefully made aware of your book actually, um, Racism at Work, The Danger of Indifference, yeah. which I have to say for anybody that's watching us now, it's a really, really good read. And part of why I'm doing this summit, to be honest, is because I only understood myself as a guy with my colour skin binner last year yeah. in 2018, what white male privilege is. Yeah. I think until we become awake, you know, until we're awoken to the fact that there is that privilege that exists, I don't think you can even start to look at, you know, how we can show up differently in terms of being courageous or maybe being resilient, because we've got to know yeah. where we're starting from, haven't we, to some extent? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, just kind of, and I think there is a misconception, kind of, there's this kind of rather complacent belief that, that racism has 
it's like it hasn't gone away, but it's only a small proportion of people who are, who are genuinely racist. And actually, the, the, this, the, the fact that the potential to be racist resides in all of us is actually an important mm -hmm. self-realization. No, but um, do you find that people, if people become more aware of maybe some of these, I think we call them, don't you, um, in, in, is it in microaggressions? Is that correct? Is that the right it's, it's, it's typically known as microaggressions. I prefer uh, the term micro incivilities. Okay. And what I found really interesting, one of the things I've shared quite vulnerably in the past is I had this terrible thing probably up until about three years ago where you'd see someone cut across three lanes on, on a motorway. And yeah. I've been stereotyped over the years, or I'd learn to go, oh, it's an Asian woman driver going across three lanes. Yeah, of course. Really. It, could, it could be anybody. It could be, like, you know, white yeah. handband, you know, white, you know, white yeah. man. Yeah. Whatever those stereotypes that we learn are, it's fascinating. Yeah. Because they just yeah. become wedged in your head. Yeah. And yeah. I just... No, we just hear about them. And you're right. And, and, and we're all, we're all um, susceptible to them. And then until, until you kind of, that, it must be, it must be that, Kind of re uh, we reach these assumptions very quickly, make these assumptions very quickly, and then questioning those is actually an important part of realizing where we're tripping ourselves up. I, lo I love that, and I, and I guess that for me is a little bit of the courage piece, actually, Binner, in this is actually how do we actually stop and do that self analysis? You know, because yeah. you know, how, how often, and maybe in your practice, you can talk about this. You know, do, do people is it an obvious thing for people to start with themselves? I think so often we look outside to say, oh, it must be them. Or yeah. is that situation made it happen when actually it's our own thinking, isn't it, that ultimately causes bias? Or, or is it something else going on there? Out of yeah, I think it's very easy. And I'm including myself in this. It's very easy to say, yeah, that, that, they're the, you're the prejudiced individual. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, I totally get it. You know, racism, yeah, it's, it's really bad. And you need to do better. Um, and it's always somebody else's problem. Because when you're pointing the finger at me, I need to do better. Uh, and what what we really need to do is turn the mirror on ourselves and actually where where do I need to do better uh, and there's this constant uh, kind of uh, recognition of bias in other people and a lack of recognition of it in ourselves uh, and you can see it and, and there's a there's a rather a comforting assumption that you can, people kind of assume that conservatives are people with a small c conservative small and big c um, are more racist than um, more liberal-minded people. Um, there's no evidence to show that at all. There's no research which demonstrates that. Uh, the, the, in fact, in some respects, the people who are more liberal about it are, are kind of, um, are kind of more. I find sometimes can be more difficult to persuade of this because they're they're they're, they're so convinced it's the other person who has the problem. They're not prepared to look at it in themselves. That's so so fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> do, do, do you think to some extent, you know, coming back to your, you know, the, the topic we wanted to discuss those around resilience, do you think mm. we can improve our resilience if we are more self-aware? To some does that do those go together? I don't know if it's causal or if there's just some influence there, you know. Yeah, I mean you need to be what, the, what the, 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 the things the things we need to look at, we need to think about what we're thinking about. Because mm. the 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 um the people that we have, the people we talk to the most every day, the person we talk to the most every day is ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are having these conversations with ourselves every day, and we've been having them every day ever since we learned how to speak. Uh, and, uh, the, but we never analyze what's going on in our own heads, and, and the, the scripts we're using can be, can be very repetitive. And so the first part of that self-awareness piece you're, you're making is actually to kind of think, actually, well, something's just happened. What am I telling myself? Uh, and just being aware of that self-talk and analyzing what it means in practice is one of the, one of the ingredients of making ourselves more resilient. Oh, that's, that, you're saying it just resonates so much for me because I, again, one of the reasons to put it on this summit is because I was someone that's locked behind my head after sort of adolescent mm. bullying at the age of 12, 13. You know, it's not like I've lived there if I'm being really honest, it's not like I was upset and, you know, I couldn't leave the house. But the length of self-talk over certainly the sort of my 20s was quite fascinating. So I remember saying to myself, you don't deserve to get that promotion. You've been passed mm. over again. Your face doesn't fit here. You need to get another job. Mm. And literally, no one had told me that, Binner. Not one person mm. had told me that. All of it was inside my own head. Mm. And I didn't realise that till literally two years ago. It's really fascinating. Mm. Two years? Well, it's recent. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know it was that recent. Yeah, yeah wow. perhaps literally that recent. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, so yeah, just, but that's a great but that but that's it exactly 
we've we've demonstrated it exactly actually that you don't actually realize that we're telling ourselves these things and that's having an impact in terms of our emotions um and uh, cause there's, there's research that's been done that you can you, you tell yourself that the kind of negative things you're doing and then you do a, a, you do, do a quick evaluation of how you're feeling uh and but you tell yourself something uh, um tell yourself the opposite of the, so, those sorts of things you have a, a you have a positive impact on our emotions and our well-being so, so it has an impact in all sorts of ways brilliant so do you mind is there any sort of examples you could share with with us and the, and the viewers you know, has there been an example where you've had to step into your courage bin and maybe it's setting up your business or maybe it was some 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 other example where you've had to sort of lean in or maybe may, maybe sort of feel the fear a little bit but do it anyway is there anything that's gone on for oh, you? I, I, it happens to me all the time yeah yeah it, it happens um um it happens all the time um but the I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you one example. I, mean, the, the, I won't give you a recent example, but I'll give you one that happened um, 12, 13 years ago. I was asked to do a keynote speech at the uh, uh, a, a psychology conference. So it's very prestigious, and and um, and I, I chose to do um, I chose to do something new. So I chose to do, do a talk about the future of occupational psychology. And I talked to a lot of people, did a lot of reading, and just kind of started formulating my own views about this. I just thought it was going to be rubbish. I thought it was going to be awful. There's going to be several hundred psychologists, so my peers, effectively, um, and I'm just going to I'm just going to fall completely flat on my face, and uh, it's going to be terrible. And uh, um, you know, the the um, this is just need me ruined, and you know, the people will just think, you know, what an idiot who invited him to come and do do this. Um, and they got so actually got so bad, I actually got uh, stomach pain. I went mm -hmm. to the doctor. Now, I was just walking along the street in Oxford, our office is in Oxford, and I was walking along the street at lunchtime, just trying to get a sandwich, and I doubled over with pain um, in my stomach. I doubled over, I, I couldn't carry on walking, and I had to just get my breath back. I had to clutch hold of a wall, and uh, then got back to the office. I went to the doctor, and the doctor gave me a check, and he got nothing, uh, and he kind of tested for an ulcer. It like, doesn't seem to be that. Um, have, have you, um, have you, are you experienced any stress at work? I said, well, I don't, I don't, I don't feel stress. Uh, I suddenly just got this big tour coming up, but that wouldn't be making me feel like this. And it wasn't until after I'd done the tour that I realised the pains had gone away. Wow. Uh, and so it was, I was actually, so all that, that kind of self-talk is going to be awful, it's going to be rubbish, and, you know, all of those kind of things was actually having an impact in terms of my physical health. Um, wow. Jesse, thank you so much for sharing that, because I just think it really helps the viewers to bring to life what we're talking about here, which is... Just, we've got to understand that to be courageous, I feel, to be courageous, we've truly got to be ourselves more. You know, we've got to get present, yeah. to allow ourselves to be in the moment, I feel, a little bit more and get away from just fear, fear, fear of the future. Cause it, uh, cause my belief, and please correct me, Binner, is that a lot, of, a lot of the worry, the anguish type thing, ultimately it's fear, isn't it? It's fear of something yeah. showing up. Yeah. Yeah. In this case, I mean, it made, it made me work harder. Okay. Uh, so um, you know the um, uh, the talk uh, actually the, so, <laughs> I suppose I didn't give it the ending and the talk went very well. <laughs> Good. The, the talk went. The talk went. The talk went. <laughs> the talk went very well. Yeah. Uh, and um, but the the um, yeah that that um, it just made me work harder that then to um, you know I forgot all of these worries and I just kind of and I was working harder on it. I was working hard enough on it anyway. Uh, but it just made me work hard to make sure that that uh, I'd got this nailed down. And, and the other thing is that, that I never get rid of those anxieties, actually. I, I haven't found a way of getting rid of those anxieties completely. It's just one of those things that I just... Uh, um, oh yeah, I got to a certain point. That, that must have been the turning point, actually. I thought, yeah, I'm never going to get rid of this. I'm, never not, I'm, I'm always going to have that anxiety, so I might as well learn to not love it exactly. But I need, I need to accept it. It's just going to be around. Uh, and it's part of the process of me getting something done. Yeah, and, and I guess at the end of the day, we're not we're not saying here that oh, you know, ultimately it's not bad to have that adrenaline. Because ultimately, if you're speaking in front of 700 people, I think yeah. it'd be pretty blasé to walk up and be able to nail it and walk away going, "I'm perfect." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but maybe you'll get to that one day. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I don't, but I, I'm not expecting to. That, that's the point. This is, it, it's yeah. kind of, I'm not sure whether this is a good strategy or not, but there's an acceptance on my part now is that when these things happen, I feel the and I feel that anxiety. That's just part of the process. 
uh, and that I just need to work on getting it. I just need to work on making sure I feel as comfortable as I can be. Oh, brilliant. And, and in terms of people being more resilient, you know, we're in this environment, aren't we, which is super, you know, always on technology. People feel hyper busy, hyper pressured. What, what are you seeing in your clients, maybe your work, Binna, where, you know, what sort of strategies or coping mechanisms are people using to be more resilient or to develop that resilience muscle currently? Yeah, the, the um, I think that the, one of the things, so you need to analyze, we need to look at our own self-talk. But the, 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 other, the other thing that we, we, we really do need is, is the support of other people. I'm not just talking about people at work necessarily, but we do need the work, or you do, do need the support of other people at work. So actually having that network of individuals that you can turn to when you're under pressure, uh, and that, that we can turn to and say, look, Gary, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a bit here. Can you give me a hand? Or can I have, can I, you mind if I have a chat? So I wouldn't mind just kind of just, just chewing over with you, just kind of uh, see whether you can help me out. The, um, and you might say, well, actually, uh, I, I'm happy to do that. But also, you might want to talk to, you might, you might, have, you might have talked to, um, you know, Phil um, over there or Nancy. They, they may be able to help us too. They, they, they may be able to give you uh, some words of advice. So actually, that support you get from other people is actually is critically important. So don't, don't, neglect, don't neglect that support network. And if you don't have a support network, you've got to get one. Yeah, Joe, that, that, that's, 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 such, that's such a powerful message. I've, so when I, yes, when I had my mental health challenge a couple of years ago, that was all my own thinking again. I was stuck inside my own head and it was incredible. Mm. It's only when I stepped back and realised who was actually around me. Mm. I, I could have asked any one of them. So like, can I bounce this idea off? Is what I'm seeing true or not based yeah. on what I'm telling you? But I just didn't do it because I didn't have the courage because I didn't feel, I thought I'd be weak to ask for yeah. that help. And I think that's yeah. really part of the, the barrier, isn't it, for some people as well? Yeah, yeah, that perception that other people, and then you find that other people have got they they they, they empathise completely because they you know they've gone through it themselves or gone through something similar themselves. It's, yeah, it's, it's, but it's only until you reach out you realise that. It's just fascinating, isn't it? And like when we talked about courage, for me, it's a, I, I guess ultimately what I'm learning and what I'm feeling as as, as I talk to more great people like you, Binner, is just. There's just a lot of this, you know, just getting present seems to be such a big theme that I'm, that I'm learning and talking to people. It's just like, get present, allow yourself to catch up with your thinking. And actually you said, as you said, analyze it, you know, mm. feel the feeling. Is it true? Is it not true? Mm. And do something with it rather than just react to it. Mm. Is that something you mm. agree or challenge? What's your sort of take? No, no, that's good. It's a good point. It's a very good point. Actually, that, 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 this whole point, that, 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 that uh, idea of kind of living in the moment, and just appreciating how you're feeling, uh, just understanding how you're feeling at, uh, in the first place, and where you're feeling it. Um, the uh, that that's critically important, I, and and I think that's actually, uh, I think one of the str the strategies that people are employing now is this uh, about meditation, mindfulness, because that that's catching on in organisations. Mm. Um, and I think it's because of the stresses and strains that people are experiencing. People all express, people have always expressed, uh, uh, felt stresses and strains i'm not sure whether we feel it more now than we did in the past i don't know uh, the the uh, but we, we have we have um, but because of the um, resources available to us now we have ways and means of understanding what mindfulness is about there's some great apps which can help us and i think that kind of leads to the increase and people find that very helpful just to kind of just you know settle things down yeah i love love that what's what's your sort of hopes for you, you know around the work that you're doing around sort of you know bias as well as helping people be more resilient you, what, what's your sort of sense of what's going on in the world of work right now Binna? do you feel that we are becoming more resilient you feel we're we i know we look at the news you'd think we're completely disconnected but i've just got this hopeful feeling that we're actually reconnecting <laughs> as human yeah. beings at the moment i don't know if that's technology yeah. or something else what's your sort of general feeling right now about you know, you know generally in terms of us as human beings. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm actually, I'm actually quite, I'm actually very optimistic. I know the fact that we do talk about these things, uh, and it raises. But I think that the whole point about raising issues that may make us feel a bit uncomfortable, and it creates, it, and the, the, the discussion of the topics is creating tension. Even though that's not a nice, they're not nice feelings to have. The discussion itself will lead to something. At least we're having the discussions, mm -hmm. and uh, engaging more people in in uh, in those discussions is is really important. Uh, and the discussions that we weren't having when I started my career. 
uh, mm. and uh, and that's a that's a really positive development because at least now people are willing to uh, to to look at the issues and then have an argument about them. You know, the, 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 there are no there are no easy solutions to things, and there are no solutions where everybody's going to agree. But we've got to recognise that people have different points of view on on any topic. You know, something that's coming up for me as you speak there actually is around there's something courageous about being empathetic to somebody yeah. else's point of view. And I think particularly when you look at the polarity that we're seeing everywhere at the moment, yeah. just to lean in and go, actually, let me listen, Dinner, to what you've got to say. I'm interested yeah. and I to really hear it. Yeah. And then actually give you my point of view rather than this, I have to be right, polarisation. Yeah. I, I think that's yeah. really coming up for me what you're describing there. Yeah, and I think, I think and your point about the way things are changing, I, I actually do feel that the, the, the world has changed. Uh, and that despite everything that's going on at the moment, um, despite everything that's going on at the moment, the, the, I, I think that we are more willing to listen to one another. Um, I think, our, the, 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 and you, you can see it going on. I mean, you can also see examples of, you know, where the opposite are going on. We get, but that always comes up on the news and on TV, you know, where, where the polarities exist. But I think there's a lot of, there are a lot of people on a daily basis who are trying to understand that, what, how other people think uh, and feel. I so I actually, I'm actually pretty optimistic. I love it. I, I, I share it with you. I, I do think that we need a good news channel somewhere, don't we? <laughs> Just yeah. what's some of the good stuff that's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, but actually, um, oh, I think I think I told you before actually that the one of the things I found which had the a, a real positive it only took me a few months to realise it was having a positive positive effect on me was I just switched off the news mm. I didn't didn't read the newspapers I uh, I didn't read the national newspapers I didn't watch national news all I had was the local newspaper and the and local regional TV news um, and I just switched off from all of it and I, and, I, and I haven't really switched back on. Uh, and um, the big stuff you actually will hear about because people will talk about it um, and um, but a lot of the other stuff which is just you know the bad news that you get on the news the 24 actually sometimes because there are lots of stuff with news channels you don't get news do you, you get speculation yeah such a great point so what is Theresa May going to say in half an hour why can't you wait half an hour uh, <laughs> The, 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 uh, the, there's all of that. The, the, so you're not getting news anyway. You just get a lot of speculation. And uh, the, the uh, um, and I found it did have a very positive effect on me, actually, just stepping away from um, the news. It's, it's it's really funny because literally, I can share that with you. I've done the same after our meeting yeah. that's a few months ago. I did exactly yeah. the same. And I remember talking to my my other half, and she was, but how can you not listen to the news because you're not going to yeah. know what's going on? And exactly yeah. described. I've not missed it at all. And I actually yeah. believe, you know, if I was going to try and put an approximate measure on, I reckon I've got an hour back a day plus. <laughs> Genuinely. Because yeah. I used to, because I, you, you, just get ang you just get anguish and frustration, like why yeah. is it working? You can't influence any of it, Binner, can you? Yeah. So why, so why have it going into your head? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the big stuff, the really big stuff, you, you actually do hear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people, people will just be, you'll hear them in a, in a coffee shop. You know, they're just going to say, oh, well, wow, what, what about this and what about that you know and then and in which case i'll turn to my wife and go well what was that about what were they what were they talking about because oh well the um you know such and such has happened um so you you, you do I, mean, I do pick up the news mm -hmm. um without watching the news totally, totally resonates and again thank you for that tip and i think it's a great tip for anyone watching if you want to try and get a little bit of your sanity back in this very loud world it's a great way mm. to switch off switch off the the 24 hour news i love that Mm. Well, as we start to wrap up, Binner, what is there anything else that you'd like to share with, with any of our viewers? Is there any other sort of ideas you've got outside of um, sort of listening, you know, listening to yourself, becoming more aware as to how to try and build resilience? Really, resilient? Yeah, and getting the support of other people. Mm -hmm. the, 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 but the, the first thing, just, just to elaborate a bit further on, um, uh, on, on listening to, your, to that self-talk, the first thing you have to do is just say stop. So it's not just about writing the, 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 your thoughts and ideas down. It's just about saying, like, stop, stop doing it. That, that, that's the point, that stop sign up is actually really important. You know, you're going through the same old thing. You're worrying about the same, you, you keep making the same statements. Like, I can't do this job. I'm not worthy of the job. I'm going to get caught out. 
um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. You, the first thing you have to say is stop. Uh, and then the next thing you have to do is start writing these things down. So uh, I'm not capable of doing this job. I'm going to be out. My, I'm going to be caught out soon. You write the things down. And you kind of write a counter argument to that. Um, so mm -hmm. I'll be caught out. Well, why will I be caught out? I've got, I've got 20 years of experience behind me. I've got the qualification to do this. I've done it elsewhere. It's a promotion. I've led a team before. I know what I'm doing. Uh, so you, so the, is it stop? Write it down, and then write the counter argument. So there's a, there's there's, a, there's two or three steps to it, not just about analysing. There's two or three steps to it. That's brilliant. What a fantastic tip to end on. Thank you so much for that. How can people reach out to you if they want to follow up the conversation or just make contact with you, Ben? How, what's the best? Uh, I'm, I'm on I'm in, uh, I'm on social media. I'm LinkedIn, on Twitter. So that would be the most straightforward way. Perfect. Look, thank you so much for your time. Been a joy. Cheers, Ben. Thanks, Gary. Cheers.